the test administration and security agreement, and the test administrator prohibited activities agreement again. This will be the third time you sign this, but I must have it with the date of today. So we need to make sure that we're covering all of our bases. Next year, we're gonna streamline things a little bit. We're not gonna have you have to sign these for everything, um, since it is a progress monitoring for the first two. But this year, we weren't taking any chances. Um, get, making sure we have everything ready to go. And now I'm going to pass it on to Miss Pelesny. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited. You know me. I have to have engagement. So we are going to get engaged. Get up. Everybody stand up. Stand up like this. Stand up. I know. You're so excited. Me too. I know. So you're going to stand up and we're going to play our famous Would You Rather. So um, this is how it's going to work. One, everybody has to play. Two, you cannot go with somebody on your team. Three, I don't teach math. Three, you um, have to go with somebody you've never gone with before. So that's how this goes, all right? And I'm gonna go like five, four, three. It's gonna be that fast to find somebody. Are you ready? Five, find a partner. Four, three, two. or a rat in your supply closet. You have 10 seconds. Because I still have to keep saying 
there are prohibitive activities and I cannot have you guys doing any of them and lose your license. So please pay close attention. This is our calendar. You have it in front of you. This will help you to make sure you know where you're at or where the kids are at. Interventionists will know where your kids are at. Um, ESE will be pulling those grade level kids on the days that they are testing. Remember, kids can only test in one day session. It doesn't matter. They all can have extra time, but it's all in one day. So third grade, you start, you're the first ones on the chopping block. We're going up on Tuesday, and we are gonna be ready to go. They're gonna take us and run with it. ESC will pull your kids first thing in the morning, and away we go. Yes, Ms. Shaktora. This is the district calendar. Oh. Yeah, this is the district calendar. You've got our calendar. Okay. I should have skipped right over that. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, but this just shows you that we are doing what the district is telling us to do. But third grade will start. Um, I believe fifth grade is second because fourth grade is going to be on a field trip on Thursday. And then fourth grade will take over on Friday. So we we're, we're, should be ready to go. Um, that will be for reading next week. We don't go to math until the following week. So what does that mean for when you're done with testing teachers? What are you going to be practicing? Or fifth grade, what else are you studying? Hi. Thank you. Okay, here. All right. All right, so this entertainment right here is PM3. This is PM3. It's going to be summative assessment used for accountability purposes. FYI, you're going to take the little note later on, but you can silently be a little, uh, it's going to have more questions than the other one has. So just think about that, especially third grade. Um, each test will be administered in one day, fast and star. And then each subject area test, civic, science, will be administered in one day, just like it was before. And then all of the FAST and STAR assessments are computer adaptive, which we're doing computer anyway. All right, next slide, please. I just love to say that. Next slide, please. Um, grades three through 10, FAST, PM, and spring um, best, and of course, uh, scores will be available virtually immediately. This is new and exciting. So that is really, really, really interesting and good. Third grade, we'll be able to take that and use that for who needs a, another assessment at the end of the week for just for funsies. Grade three, ELA reading scores, level one scores should be considered actionable as soon as they're reported. So we're gonna implement good course, stra uh, a good um, cost strategies or good, what's it called? Not good cost, it's a good cost, good, good cause exemption, et cetera, to move on to the next steps. And then we're gonna kick it old school with science and social studies. They're gonna be reported like the similar time frames of past FSA. All right, June, middle of June. Okay, spring reporting, the family portal. So in accordance with Florida statute, you should have this memorized, this is on the quiz. 1008.25, K through 10 p.m. results must be within two weeks of their students' attempts. This is just for the families. They'll have this for the families. To help them meet their uh, reporting requirements, the Florida Department of Education will update the understanding reports for families, document to include information with the detailed individual student report hereto referred as ISR. And what that truly means is I will be making copies for you. Definitely make your copies. That's what that really means. Okay, next slide. Timing, here's your timing session. Kindergarten, um, ELA or math are gonna be done in that same small group as we've done it before, right, Mr. Stenick? Same as it has been. Um, so Mr. Stenick will have all the details needed for that. Star, first and second, ELA or math should be 20 minutes, but we schedule an hour and that's gonna pretty much kick it the same way we've done it the last two times. We shouldn't have any much variation. Fast math, or excuse me, ELA reading 120 minutes, math 100 minutes, and then science 80 minutes for two days. Three through five are gonna sit for the full session. No books, no fun, no joy, no nothing. Yeah? You'll find that out soon. You just keep that in your mind. We're coming up, it's so exciting. Don't look ahead, don't look ahead. Um, grades three to five will sit for the full session. Any students um, still working at the end of the session may have additional time to finish up. Students have to complete that day unless they like throw up on their keyboard, in which case their parents are gonna be really busy and so is Tyler. <laughs> one quick thing, just like every time, we need one room that's assigned to have our overflow. So the kids that are done after the 120 minutes and still need to continue testing, so each grade level, I need you to send me that email by the end of the day today. Thank you.
Okay, this just talks a little bit about paper uh, accommodations. We have one student who will be receiving, and he's in fourth grade, but it will affect fourth grade, it will affect our ESC teachers, and they will take care of that. But I just want you to know that, that is an accommodation that we still can have, and we have ordered it for one student. ELL accommodations, um, this is the same thing we've always had. We are sending a letter home. Ms. Nelson, where are you? Did that go home today? Fantastic. Those went home with your kids today. Um, and it's asking the parents to send them back and either say, yes, I want my child to have the accommodation or no, I do not. In the past, it's always been a very kind of a hairy situation. They, the parents don't understand it, so they send it back, sign, and we don't know whether they want the accommodation or not. Most ELL kids um, feel more comfortable in the class setting where they're, they've been taught, everything's the same, nothing looks out of, out of place. So most of the time the kids will want to stay with you and then if they have, they'll get extra time and they, they obviously will have their dictionary even while they're with you. So that's usually what ends up happening, but you might have somebody that comes back in and I need those back in my office as soon as they come in to you. Uh, flexible scheduling, there really isn't anything other than additional time that, that is allowed on this particular test. The approved dictionaries, primary folks, you have the picture dictionaries, you should all have them by now. Tori? Perfect. So we've, those are all out there, intermediate, make sure that your ELL students uh, that Tori works with, all have their dictionaries to go with them if they do leave your room. If they're staying in your room, make sure they have their dictionary out. They can be using that. It's time! Okay, stand up! Stand up super fast! This is my favorite part. Of course! It's engagement! It's engagement! Alright, so, find a partner, get a student, a hand up. Stand up, pair up, find a partner, make it snappy. Snap five, four, three, two, one. Anybody who, anybody who has a problem. All right, you ready? Would you rather chaperone a kindergarten trip to the zoo on a rainy day or chaperone a group of middle schoolers not wearing deodorant to the up? Talking now, let's stop. Tootsie roll, lollipop. We've been talking now, let's stop. Have a seat. <laughs> Security. As, as you're seating, I just want to show 
show of hands, either a one or a two, whether you pick the principal or the congressperson. Oh, good. I love all these congresspeople. They need to know what it's like in there. today because this is the part that can lose a personal license. So we are going to be taking this a little bit more serious now. These are the test security policies and procedures. The rule prohibits, I'm not going to read the whole statute, the rule prohibits activities that may threaten the integrity of the test. And we're going to go through a bunch of them in a, in a minute here. The test administration manual has the full um, the direction that you'll be reading. Please remember that inappropriate actions by school or district personnel can result in student or classroom invalidations, loss of teaching certificate, and or involvement of law enforcement. So we don't want any of that, so we're gonna pay attention. I know. All personnel must sign the 2023, which you will get in a few minutes. You will be signing that, that one, as well as the prohibited activities agreement. One's on one side, one's on the other side. You'll have an accurate security log, which you will be given. It will have test code, test tickets for third through fifth, and it will just have the rosters for K through two in, in the same folder. You will need an accurate seating chart. Three, actually with everybody, this is something I'm still working on. Everybody this time has to put the computer that the student has. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. I'm going around right now and checking each of the lights, the, the cards, which I'm going to do some more this afternoon. And I will, I'll tell you what, on the sheet, it's going to tell you what the number is. Um, it's, if it's numbered 1 through 20, I will have that on there and I will actually sort it so it's easy for you to do. It will have a column, so if the kid's getting number 1, you don't have to worry about all the other garbage that's on that sheet. They're getting number 1, you're putting Joey's name on that sheet. That has to be attached to your seating chart. Okay, you're welcome. I don't know what else, I don't know how else I can have you guys do it, I really don't, so. Um, anyone that enters the testing room, and you had this before too, you will have the log, they have to sign in and out, that includes me when I come in, and sometimes I do forget to do that. So make sure that your sheet is right by the door. That way anybody that walks in, including Mr. Randy, if he has to walk in and check something. Mr. Tyler, you may have to remind them they need to do that, but they do need to do that. Um, test administrators may not administer the test to their family members. Is there anybody in here that's teaching their child in their classroom? Good, we're ready. School personnel may not view, copy, or reveal any test items. You're going to see it as you're walking around. You're going to see their computers. It's okay. Don't stress out on that because I do want you walking around. That's critical. But. We're not going to be going afterwards and telling somebody or making a review sheet that we can use for next year. So we're going to be careful with that. TAs and proctors may not assist the students in answering any test items. If you've got a child in your room that every single time that they're taking a test, you walk over to them and you always tell them, it's okay, Joey, you got this, we've got this. You can still do that. Because everybody in the room knows you do that every single time Joey's taking a test. If you don't do that every time that he's taking a test, then you don't do this for this test either. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we may not discuss specific test items with students after testing. So you're not gonna come up to them afterwards and say, what was the hardest thing you had to do today? Tell me all about it. What was your favorite part of the test today? We're not talking about the test, period. Um, all school personnel involved in test administration must be trained, duh and we'll sign our security agreement. Maintain the security of all test materials, that's on me. I have all the materials that are locked in my room. Um, at this point, the only materials I have are the test group codes, or the test um, tickets, um, and science. That's the only thing that's in my office right now. Um, but as you start to bring things back to me, and unlike in the past, which I wish I could do this, but I can't, where I would let you keep the folder until you would do the math test, not this time. Every single day, as soon as you're done with your test, you're going to bring that folder up to me, and every single day I have to clean it out and, and go forward with get it ready for the next day, ne next day's test, which would be math for both of you. 
So instead of keeping it in your room, where's it gonna go? Back to you. Back to, you. Back to me. Thank you very much. If you have any technical difficulties in the first 15 minutes, you stop immediately. I will be in the hallway outside your rooms. I'll be stocking the third grade in the, on those tables. Fifth grade, I'll be down by your tables. Fourth grade, I'll be in the alcove. So don't hesitate to have somebody pop their head out and say, Ms. Berg, I need you. I'll be there in a second. Um, you, if I happen to go to the bathroom and you have a problem and I'm not right there, then by all means call the office and they will find me on my walkie in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Test administrators should report any test irregularities, any disruptive students, any timing issues, loss of internet connectivity, all those kinds of things. We were able, in the, with the fourth grade last year, we had some uh, connectivity issues and we were able to log right back in, get them right back in, it was perfectly fine. But if they're off for more than 15 minutes, that's when I need to know that. So if you have a child that's all of a sudden got bumped off, just have them log right back in. But still come and get me, so I know it as well. Yes, you will absolutely be using your classroom laptops and then you'll just have to add those to the bottom. Okay. So you can say room 521, computer number one. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, they all have numbers on them, so you should be fine with that. Yeah. But we still need to have you say 521 because there will be a number one in the cart as well as in your classroom. Okay? Yes, Jolene? You'll be using the 12 you have in your room. And then whatever grade level is not testing. So in your case, it, with third grade testing, you're stealing from fifth grade. The, the desktops are set up. What do you mean the desktops aren't set up? The desktops aren't set up. They never work. Tyler says they're ready, so you might want to check with Tyler. He said all of the ones in ESE, third grade, fifth grade, fourth grade are all ready to go. So if they're not, we'll, we'll find out today. Um, anything like severe weather, those kinds of things, I have to get a hold of the district office and let them know that we've all gotten shut down for that day. And then we'll make it, we'll make plans for the future. So we don't need to, we're not going to think about that. We're not going to put that in the universe right now. Um, but that's just something that I would have to deal with. Seating charts, as I mentioned, you must have seating charts every day. And I know for kindergarten, that is a real pain because you're seeing four or five kids every single day. And I get that, but we still have to have seating charts every single day. Um, and on the CD charts, I've already got all those things on there that it says you need to have. You just have to fill it out, okay? And it's going to say computer number. You're going to actually put Poseidon or um, Zeus or Apollo. You're just going to write that where it says computer name or computer number. That way, when we look at the sheet that you're attaching to it, we're going to know which computer you used. Uh, sharing information. While students may not share information about the secured test, they absolutely can still talk to their parents about the experience that they had. That's okay. So we're not going to threaten the kids that or you can't go home and tell them anything because then they're going to invalidate your test. That's not the case. Um, we will always use option B, which tells them that they can sit quietly until the end of the test. They may not take something out of their desk. They may not take out a book. They will sit quietly. So our, I would highly recommend in the beginning, before you even start reading the directions, you remind them. We have two full hours, and so we're going to be sitting here together. If you finish before that two full hours, you're going to go back and you're going to reread all the passages again, or reread all the problems again, and double check your answers, um, because all they're going to do is just sit there. Opting out. At this point, we have nobody that has emailed me to tell me that they are opting out, um, so we should be good to go. But if you happen to hear somebody, or a child walks in that day and says their parents said they're opting out, I need to know that immediately because I will be calling that parent. Um, if we do not have an opt-out policy in Brevard County. There is no such thing. But some parents still think that they can. Um, third grade, they are absolutely cannot. Because that is their number one, they will automatically go back to third grade next year. Because the first option for passing to, third, to fourth grade is they have to have taken this and get on level two. Okay? Okay. All right, now the fun part. We're going to pass out this paperwork shortly and just make sure you sign the front and the back. This is not entertaining or interesting, but it's just that we have to look at the Florida Assessment Code that says it was developed to meet the requirements of the, uh, uh, the test security standards. It applies to anyone 
involved in the administration of a statewide assessment, which is all of you. The rule prohibits activities that may threaten the integrity, any assessment required by Florida law, as described in said rule. You can go ahead and write that down if you want to go look up the specs. Feel free. Feel free to Google that. Um, a Florida state, uh, actually I'm just going to point to the, the bullets on the bottom. You cannot read or view the passages or test items as much as you want to, you cannot. Reveal the test um, passages or test, reveal them, which means like, tell the kids, I think. Copy, oh, you can't copy it down. You can't explain any of the reading passages or test items for students. Change or otherwise interfere with student responses to test items. Copy or read um, any of the student responses, unless they, are, of course, have that accommodation. Causing achievement of schools to be inaccurately measured or reported. What is your famous saying? Anyone have a good one that they tell the kids? Do the best you can. Yeah. Anybody say anything like that? What's yours? Yes. What's your go-to? You don't have anything? Say it. Work until you're proud. Work until you're proud. I like it. Anybody else have one? You better get this. <laughs> is that what she's saying? Okay. So that's that. So make sure you sign that on the back. Administrators prohibited activities agreement. That's it's also on the back. I think it's on the or the front. It's important for you to, as a test administrator, a FAST FSA, um, NGSS, statewide science assessment, or the FCLE, to know that the following activities are prohibited: engaging in such activities may result in an investigation, loss of teaching license, prosecution for violation of the law. Please read the list of prohibited activities and sign your name on the signature line at the bottom of this page indicating that you understand these actions and their consequences. Our, our school number is 6507. 6507. School number 6507. Alright, policy revisions. Just take note of these. While you may prepare students for testing using strategies, that's allowed, to have them understand test strategies, underlining keywords, etc. You can use your cool controller, like Miss Stair, see her if you need an idea. You may not actively monitor them to ensure that they're using certain strategies. You may not offer incentives or rewards for using strategies during testing. Once testing begins, students must work on their own with the understanding that they are being monitored for independent work only. Test irregularities and security breaches. Again, these are just really things that you just need to get a hold of me immediately if something's going on. 